We're going to call to order today's special meeting of the Minot City Council. We'll start with roll call. Janser? Here. Olson? Here. Pondragula? Here. Sitma? Here. Strait? Here. Wolski? Here. Barney? Here. Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number three is a presentation by Representative Lauser on flood information mapping system. Uh, it's come to my attention that Mr. Lauser will not be able to be here today. So we are going to pass on that item and I'm going to direct the city staff to contact Representative Lauser and uh, schedule a time when perhaps he can make the same presentation to a committee of the whole meeting. So if uh, Mr. Burry would follow up on that, uh, I believe we can move over item number three and move to item number four phase one changes phase five design guidance is there a motion i would uh, move the item as listed on the agenda second moved by wolski seconded by straight discussion mr wolski thank you mayor uh i, I brought this agenda item forward uh for a number of reasons but uh uh, I think the nice part about this particular item as we kick off this discussion today on a number of things is uh, is from what I've heard from Dan and Ryan based on phase five, uh, much of this is already in the works. Uh, they, are, they are already kind of planning uh, to incorporate all of these things. So I guess what today, if we choose to support this, we're really just providing them with some additional guidance and some, some, some security that they're really already on the right path. Um, my reason for bringing this forward and wanting to provide that additional guidance is uh, the path underneath the BNSF path, uh, railroad tracks right now, uh, I consider a, a vital pedestrian access point for the community and connecting Northeast Minot to points Southeast, in particular Roosevelt Park and, uh, and the state fairgrounds. Um, it's uh, it's a, a, a not very aesthetically pretty path right now it uh, it's maybe even a little bit dangerous in, in some respects uh, but uh, getting across and under the railroad tracks and and from north to south in this community has been a challenge for a very very long time and uh, and I would hate to see us lose one of those particular points that's used right now um, as evidence of the fact that it is used that you simply need to, to walk across to the uh, to the south side of the railroad tracks and you'll see the 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 dirt worn path right in the grass and on top of the, the levee and the dikes and I've had conversations with property owners in the area uh, their their guesstimate in terms of the amount of usage uh, might be as many as uh, 40 to 50 people per day using that connection point um, so vital access to uh, the, the the northeast and southeast parts of towns um, this is sort of a two-part motion the other piece of it is the wet side access and the opening which would be on the north side of the tracks into the system uh, because if we're going to provide the the passageway under the river or under the tracks we have to give people uh, a place to go once they get to the other side and so uh, that's why this particular agenda item was lumped as two issues um, the reason I really feel that opening at 3rd Street is vital uh, there are a number of reasons uh, first and foremost public safety um, in the current iteration of design plans that have been released on phase one uh, and this has been I think pretty dramatically re reworked and tied into phase five but in that current iteration that's been made public there is no opening there and if we don't put an opening we create a very large dead space on the east end of this project um, a, a large dead space means no police uh, access no fire and rescue access to the river over a large section uh, and I think uh, from another standpoint I look at, at an area created almost 1100 feet long where there's no regular pedestrian traffic where there's no regular human eyes I think we're inviting uh, negative behavior in a location like that we're gonna see graffiti we're gonna see people uh, hanging out in those particular locations behaving in, in ways that we probably would rather they not and they wouldn't be likely to do that if they didn't if there were regular traffic and regular eyes in that location so that is uh, I would say the, the the primary reasoning behind bringing this item forward like I say I don't think uh, aside from providing guidance we have too many other considerations involved but that's my my arguments thank you for the time mayor uh, mr. Jonathan mr. mayor uh, your uh, 
position on uh, the motion, which I'm going to read just for those in the audience and maybe on TV that don't have access to this. The motion is to direct phase five designs to include a pedestrian opening to the wet, wet side of uh, MREFPP near 3rd Street Northeast, an easement from North Burlington Northern Railroad for a shared use path under the tracks and improvement of the path to ADA and BNSF standards. That, that's the emotion that we're discussing right now. Uh, Mr. Jonason? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, Alderman Wolski is correct in our 30% design for phase five. We do have this shown in there as an option um, for pedestrian access, uh, maintenance access, um, all of those things. Uh, like I said, if, if the council directs, we'll, we'll leave it in there. I think you all know my feelings on additional openings. Um, uh, like I said, uh, but if the council directs us to leave it in there, we will continue leaving that in our 30% design. I just caution um, caution the amount of amenities that we continue to in include in the flood protection as it may be perceived as not flood related. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Jonathan. Uh, uh, my only comment on this, and maybe it's prevalent through many of the items we're going to talk about today, is um, I, I don't have objections to more access in the flood walls. Uh, my only concern is if the, if the uh, participating bodies on this funding would have issue with the path component of this plan. We may have to find additional or other alternative revenue sources to fund that portion. Um, the, um, the Water Commission in Bismarck has been uh, um, very careful about these things and making sure that the, the, the state's dollars are going specifically to uh, um, flood protection and I want to make sure we don't jeopardize that. So uh, as phase five is developed, we may have to find additional revenue streams to, to uh, make these paths happen. Um, but other than that, I don't have any objection to it. Further discussion? Questions for Mr. Jonason? Alderman Padragula? Um, thank you. Uh, just a question. Would this, in, in fact, be a second opening in that stretch of, uh, of wall or dike in addition to the proposed Ann Street, which we're going to be considering later on? Mr. Mayor, Alderman Padragula, um, I know it's kind of a, a later discussion, but this would be the second opening between Broadway and, let's say, the Third Street area. If the Ann Street is put in, that would be the third opening. Currently, there is one opening uh, designed at Broadway as an entrance feature to this area. Uh, this would be, in addition to um, that opening, and then the Ann Street Bridge opening that will come up later if that's approved, that would be the third opening that you would have in this five and a half block area. Thank you. Further questions for Mr. Jonason? Alderman Wilski? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, kind of a, a maybe a comment question or a clarification to my understanding. Um, and I'm not sure where I've heard this. Maybe, Ryan, it was you or Dan. I'm not sure at what point in time. But um, my understanding of uh, some of the, the qualifications that the Water Commission is likely to use in evaluating whether these projects uh, are uh, considered for funding as a part of, part of flood protection would be whether flood protection is uh, basically, how do I frame this, uh, taking something away from us that we already have. Uh, and so in a sense, these paths exist right now in a sense, particularly the under, under piece access and, and the direct access to that path. Am I correct in thinking that that is one of the criteria that the Water Commission evaluates when they consider these as part of the project? I'll take the first step. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, uh, Alderman Wolski, I, I believe you're correct in that. They're, they're going to look if, um, you know, if, if we're disrupting uh, a current pathway, um, we have a responsibility to put that back. I think this one could be argued either way since it's 
not on the city's trail system. Um, it doesn't connect to anything underneath there. Um, so I, I would, I would guess there's, there's going to be argument both sides sure. on it. I would also add to that though that uh, we are going to be getting a new water commission. Uh, there's a, what I believe to be 100% turnover on that uh, on that body at their last meeting, and uh, the governor I believe is taking applications as we speak. So um, we'll have to also see whether there's a philosophical change amongst that body. But uh, I think it's still imperative that we make sure that we, uh, that we don't jeopardize that funding source because it is critical to everything that we're doing in the Valley for flood protection. That was the basis of my comments. Yep. I'm not saying that we can't do it or anything like that. But if we discover down the road, we'll have to find an alternative revenue source in order to make it happen. And that, that's fine. Alderman Strait? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess, Dan, too, um, I, and I don't know how the State Water Commission would look at that system maybe not connected to a current network of trails. I know that I've had discussions with Mr. Merritt from the Park District about a, a bigger vision trail system coming together throughout town. You and I have discussed that Greenway concept. Um, and I think that actually plays into our overall NDR philosophy of becoming a more resilient community recovering from the flood and I I don't know how NDR can play into water commission but I, I think that that's something that I would certainly like to have that conversation as well elevated within the new board with the State Water Commission I, I think that's a, a relevant piece that has to also be considered as we look at spending NDR money downtown, you know, it's it's all part of a larger concept. So, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Further discussion, Alderman Janser. I, I just want to try to be a little clearer on um, how the on the process, I guess. So, um, Dan, assuming that um, assuming that this motion passes, so uh, we're giving direction that the designs, which are now at thirty percent as they go forward, would continue to include or would include this opening and some trail accommodations uh, then if you know and kind of without respect to uh, at this point to what cost is for for those things so then if we get to a point um, somewhere in the future is it is it likely that so the, the water commission could say okay we'll we'll fund up to this point and then we're in the situation that the mayor alludes to where we have to come up with some other source of money to uh, include say the trails is that a possible scenario or a, a, the way it would kind of go but meanwhile we've we put the design into it already is or, you know is that am I getting the picture correctly mr. mayor alderman Janser uh, I think you outlined it perfectly yes if if we keep it in there, we'll, like I said, we'll we'll continue it as we further the design and go out for the public input and and complete the plans for this. If when the plans are presented to the State Water Commission for their approval, uh, similar to what I guess I'll be bringing you next month for the first three phases, they decide to say, okay, uh, we don't think those trails are flood protection related. And, and there's a that's half a million dollar cost. I'm just using a number. Um, they could very easily say, you know, we'll participate in constructing the walls. You've got an estimate for that, but that cost for putting those trails in or, or the opening for the trails, um, the city serves her for joint board, who's a project sponsor. You have to come up with that we're not going to participate in a 65% cost share in that. So it'll be a total 100% local cost for those items. They, okay. they, and they have I the right to do up. that. And so, so I guess then the question in my mind is, okay, if, if we came to that juncture, then is, is our choice as the city, knowing that we have to bear 100% of those costs, to say, okay, let's not do that now. Let's leave that feature out and build the flood protection which is primary without that and we'll 
do it later or you know when we can afford it that sort of thing or are we then obligated to go forward with the plan as it's designed with that included and uh, have to come up with the money somehow mr mayor alderman janser i think you always have will have the right to remove objects from it so if there isn't funding for it you could say okay we're not going to build it or uh, like you said you could you know if there's some uh, additional funding that's been identified from somewhere a grant that came up that could help or something but you always have the option to say no we're not going to build this portion remove it from the plans uh, because the state water commission isn't going to participate and move forward and one last follow-up mr jan sir uh, and and in terms of the um obviously somebody is doing the design work on this there are costs associated with that um does you know so are, are we paying for that or is that that design work that's being done on say phase five is that coming out of um the grant that we've already received on the 65 35 basis is that it's part of the project costs i'm assuming is that correct mr mayor alderman jansford that's that's correct the the design uh any design costs are cost shared on on this with the state water commission and then the city of minot's local match okay thank you very much any other discussion prior to alderman Pajagula? a question um from an engineering and design standpoint following up on what alderman Janser mentioned is it easier and cheaper and better to design it in and then decide not to go with it rather than not design it in later come back and say gee we really wanted this mr mayor alderman padragula um i might have to phone a friend <laughs> do you have one <laughs> that's the other thing he has many we pay ryan so i okay. consider it your paid friend yeah paid friend mr ackerman not sure where that puts me, I guess, as a paid friend. But, uh, Mr. Mayor, Alderman Padragula, um, I, I believe you're on the right track in, in, in your assumption that doing this now is going to be cheaper than trying to do this later, especially if we're talking about altering and adding, let's say, an opening in the flood wall, you know, cutting out a section of concrete and retrofitting. That's not something that we want to do. So if you guys want to go with these openings and you're you know, strong in your opinions on that, I'd recommend that you make those decisions now um, I guess from my perspective I, I, I guess I look at the the openings and the paths and things like that I think the openings are uh, certainly if we're providing openings where there are existing access points those become something that is going to be easier to justify than let's say upgrading an existing trail underneath the BNSF tracks to ADA standards I mean we can certainly provide access to that trail but to say that flood control is responsible for upgrading an existing path that sits there that we're not touching, it's going to be tougher. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I just, right. but, I, but I think that's, if you were to make an assumption about where this is going to go when we march it up the line, I would start to plan for different revenue sources to address that particular ask. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Strait. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. And to that point, Ryan, I guess that's been my comment with particular uh, Mr. Janser is in terms of the the scope and vision here if we never talk about these things uh, and we never include them in the larger concept they're never going to happen and if at some point somebody does want to talk about these or consider them they become infinitely more expensive and so I appreciate that's why we're here and I appreciate you saying that thank you further discussion Mr. Mayor Alderman Olson a question for Mr. Ackerman Mr. Ackerman don't go away <laughs> what would be the estimated cost to engineering to include this concept at this point so we had looked at that uh, previously and I'm gonna pull a little bit from memory here um, but adding an opening as I recall and I may need to phone another paid friend uh, uh, as I recall adding an opening all in was about a hundred thousand dollars to add a pedestrian opening um, you know the design of this just to be just to be honest a part of our scope in the design process is to incorporate the community's vision for what the greenway is going to look like the elements of the greenway may not be fundable using flood control dollars but it's, it's our duty to incorporate the community's vision to at least accommodate these types of considerations so I you know by way of 
looking at the design of this trail and <coughs> figuring out how much that's going to cost. I, I, I don't think that it would be appropriate to say that, well, that design or those considerations would be outside of our anticipated scope. Okay. Like, we can work that in. All right. Thank you. I, I'd also like to add um, that we are, we are designing something that is going to outlive all of us. And it would be nice to plan for the long term and not the short term and look at how this is going to be used for 50 plus years. And um, I believe the access points are going to be helpful in helping the community live with the structure. <coughs> and I think it's, uh, it's um, uh, it, it, there, there's a component of being short-sighted and overly frugal to eliminate that for the sake of dollars today. But that's just my own opinion. I just want to add one last thing that in all my years on the council, I've never heard of it referred to as Ben's Tavern's Neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. <coughs> so I'm sorry. Uh, I digress. Uh, further discussion on the motion. Alderman Sitma. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to reiterate as well uh, a point that you had just made. I, I look at our current flood control, the short-sightedness of rock line ditches with zero access that uh, really served the purpose that they had intended it to but completely closed off an asset to the city and, and forever, uh, you know, put us in this position. If 2011 had never happened, we would still have an unusable river today. And I don't want this project to fall under that same guise. Uh, let's take a look at this. I mean, at least if we can get an idea of what the cost is and if the water, uh, if the water board comes back and says we have to fund it, we have that option then of at least looking at can we find funding for it. Uh, we're getting, should be getting close to calling the question. Uh, further discussion? Anyone else in the audience care to comment? Call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Hadragula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Motion passes. Item number five is phase one West End design evaluation. Uh, there's a motion at the bottom there. Would anybody like to represent that? So moved. Alderman Wolski, second. Second. Right? Seconded by who? Uh, Alderman Strait. Uh, Mr. Wolski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I think we're going to, for at least a few of these items, repeat a lot of the same arguments in terms of the long-term visioning and, uh, and, and planning on the front end of these particular things. Uh, this, uh, this is a, a concept that just occurred to me uh, in, in the last few months as I looked at the phase one designs and, and you start to imagine the, the co connectivity that we are trying to create between different parts of town, northwest Minot downtown. Uh, and, and, and as a person who spends a lot of time on a, on a bike uh, commuting to, to various places on a regular basis, one of the challenges is getting across the busy roads. Uh, Broadway as a five-lane road is, uh, is not always e easy to get across as a pedestrian. The same with 4th Avenue. A and so what I identified in, as an opportunity, something to explore here, is a continuation of the wet side path from the Broadway access point where it's cur currently designed and planned for. Then proceeding to the west and underneath the, the, pr the Broadway bridge project. Uh, and so it would connect around that little loop of the river and then tie in possibly to Fourth Avenue, but, but also leave us the ability to perhaps go under Fourth Avenue in the future. And then <coughs> beyond that point and outside the scope of this motion, <coughs> there, there leaves us an opportunity for a very short path up to Fourth Street Northwest. And in the completion of those different elements, all of a sudden we have created a pedestrian access point from basically MSU via, via regular streets, uh, two-lane residential streets all the way to downtown. And in that corridor we would have pedestrians and bikers that wouldn't, they, they would not have to cross a major four-lane or five-lane road along the way. So to me as I, as I evaluated the possibility of that, uh, I thought, boy, this, this just feels like smart planning at this particular point. Um, and, and as a is a, maybe a final piece in support of this. Uh, 
I go back to the 2012-2013 the era when the city was going through the river front and center planning process. It was in the immediate aftermath of the flood. Uh, we hired a consultant. I can't remember the name of the operation, but, but I feel like we spent as much as maybe uh, four or $500,000. And, and these folks came into town. They organized numerous <coughs> community meetings, uh, and they delivered a, 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 what I would say was a, a very well thought out vision for this community. And, and it was really done with a lot of neighborhood and citizen input. And, and one of the number one goals, or the common goals, and what they did was they looked, they divided the town up into a bunch of different neighborhoods, downtown, parts of Northwest Minot. Uh, and the common goals that they found through all these different neighborhood exercises, uh, the, the number one was to develop a multi-season trail system that is safe, enjoyable, and accessible to the public with connections to neighborhood destinations. The second goal was to provide safe and functional streets that serve vehicles, bicycles, pedestrians, and transit. Uh, I feel like this planning in this particular concept speaks to two of those goals uh, th that the citizens of Minot have put at the top of the list in terms of what they want to see. And I think it would be uh, a shame to, to miss the opportunity to at least not put it in the plans at this point. Before we continue on with additional comments, I want to read the motion uh, for those that are listening in or watching via um, the internet. The motion is to request the Sears River Joint Board to evaluate the costs and viability of continuing the wet side shared use path from the Broadway Park entrance westward under the Broadway Bridge to provide pedestrian access to 4th Avenue and points beyond. That's the motion, <clears throat> excuse me, on the floor. Any additional comments on this motion by the council? Alderman Padragula. I wanted to thank Alderman Walski for his initiative and to support the motion. Uh, I'm particularly pleased with the fact that we're realizing that not everybody in the community drives all the time. And I think we need to support walkers and especially bicyclists. Um, it's a personal issue for me. I walk or bike to work. And a week or two may go by without me using my car. And I think we need to encourage that in terms of physical fitness, in terms of the community. I also like the idea of opening up an area. Right now, underneath the Broadway Bridge, we often have homeless people, vagrants, there's uh, vandalism, graffiti. And I think if we have people going in and out of those areas regularly, I think that will cut the incidence of that down. Um, I think it's also potentially a little a nice recreational island in the middle of a busy city underneath the bridge is kind of really pretty. There are ducks and stuff. And I think to the extent that we can do that and we can facilitate alternate modes of transportation besides just driving um, and facilitate these recreational options, I think that's an excellent idea. Mr. Jonason, would you care to comment on the motion? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, if I could address just a, a couple things uh, in looking at this. Um, one, uh, again, Alderman Wolski kind of, I guess, talked about this, or can you really say this is flood related? Um, you know, keeping in mind it's, it's going to be some cost to look at this uh, to see if it's done, and perhaps I can sway you or save you some time or money. Um, I've looked into this a little bit it is going to be very difficult to run a path under here if even possible. One of the things we run into is we had an access area planned under here uh, under the DOT bridge project that now has a five foot tall uh, berm of riprap in, the, in place where you could have run a path through. So to run a path under there is going to be extremely difficult you're going to have to get across um, the outlet of that stormwater pump station and uh, that's there. It's going to pose another, I guess, uh, obstacle, tough obstacle to get around. After you come around the bend and you're going up towards 4th Avenue, you have another box culvert and inlet um, that will come off of what becomes a, a storage loop when the maple diversion goes in. So to get the grade, get up over that and then get it down underneath the 4th Avenue bridge itself, uh, I think is going to be about impossible to meet the grade requirements for ADA. And just with the measurements that we've taken this week, uh, looking at the bottom beam of the bridge, their uh, uh, concrete T structure beam, from the bottom of that beam to the water level now, 
which is probably the lowest we're going to see it at all, is just under eight feet. AASHTO recommends you have 10 feet of clearance for a pedestrian bike facility. You can go down to eight feet, but if you were to construct that path now to meet ADA and AASHTO requirements, you would be constructing the top of that path at the water level. So um, I guess you can take that into consideration. Um, also, when you talk about safety, keep in mind Broadway and 4th is a signalized intersection. It has pedestrian actuated buttons for the safe cost crossing of pedestrians walking or biking there. So it does provide a safe crossing over there. Thank you, Mr. Jonathan. I want to, I just want to uh, point out, <coughs> excuse me, that the motion is to request Service River Joint Board to evaluate the cost and viability. So if, if I support this motion, it will be on the basis that we are looking into it but not committed to the project because I think that you raised some very valid concerns, but I still think it would be prudent to investigate those further and maybe finding, you know, by looking further into it, we can find some, some again, some alternative uh, funding sources and also uh, ways around those very valid concerns that you've raised. Um, Alderman Janser? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I guess that was, that's really kind of my concern on this one. You know, we're, we're requesting that the Service River Joint Board do this. It, it, see, it strikes me that, you know, um, it might be within the realm of possibility that they come back to us and say, okay, well, it's going to cost, you know, X amount of dollars to have that process done. I mean, you know, we're asking them to fund something and uh, do a evaluation of, you know, a possible feature that, um, you know, it doesn't seem to me directly relates to flood control. Uh, it doesn't exist currently uh, as uh, the, some of the other pathway things did. So I, I guess we can leave it to them how they want to respond. But and it, it's not that I, it's not that I um, disagree with Alderman, Alderman Podergula or, or Wolski on the the concept. You know, connectivity is is a great thing to have in a community. Um, but I think that this motion. Um, you know, uh, doesn't quite make clear who's foot in the bill and um, what kind of result we're going to get. So that's those are valid concerns, especially with regards to the Sir Server Joint Board evaluating the cost and viability. Is there a better body to do that than them? Is it something staff could do or would be willing to do, or maybe we could include our friends from the Park District? Um, since they came today, um, I mean, would that be a better, um, better way of doing it? That way, we don't complicate the the flood structure uh, process with with uh, a potentially good idea for connectivity. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, I guess. Right now, my understanding is you're directing our design engineers that we have to look into this, which would be the their service or the joint boards. And that's why I said there would be a cost okay. um, based on, like I said, with what I've seen in, in talking to them and gone out and looking at this. My opinion is um, it is going to be very costly or almost impossible to get a path through there due to the clearance right now even with what you have from the bottom of that bridge to the top of the water. Okay. So I don't know if that's enough to, I guess, uh, defray the idea. Um, I can say that I have staff available that would be able to do a, a design analysis on this. Further discussion? Alderman Wolski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you know, in crafting this particular motion, uh, I, I think we get back to, and the reason I framed it in this particular way is because uh, simple efficiency in government between political subdivisions, everything else like that. I, uh, Mr. Merritt's here, maybe they would care to speak to, to how this path may fit in their particular vision and what they're attempting to do with the trail and system. But 
to, to tool up another design firm or another agency and, and look at this particular concept when we already have a team down there who is, who is really doing this particular work uh, very intensely and also ha knows the ins and outs of the flood protection designs in that area that are essential. To me, it just made sense that it, that it would be Houston Engineering in the scope of their phase one work to, to evaluate this uh, and, and then bring that forward to the SRJB for, for further discussion there. Um, and, and so really this is a, is a request to take a look at this. And, and as uh, Mr. Ackerman stated uh, previously, I, I, you know, part of their, the scope of their work is to try and encompass the, the, the larger vision of the community. And, and so in that respect, I, I still am, am very supportive of this motion and, and will support it. Mr. Jonason, the, um, during the work by the Sur Server Joint Board, um, how much are they doing with path design? Is it only structure design or are they also working on path design? Mr. Mayor, uh, the consultant's doing all of it, all of the path design, the structure, uh, the pump station, everything. Uh, for this phase, Houston is doing, uh, I guess, the entire design for everything in the in So this, But this isn't an, an existing path that we are uh, working around. This is a new path and will be new. Um, so how much work is it for them then to try to integrate a path into their existing work? Mr. Mayor, uh, since we have one of the Houston design engineers here, uh, I might have to phone a friend again. <laughs> All right. You're running out. Your name and address for the record, please. Sure, Mr. Mayor. Jerry Bentz with Houston Engineering. What was your last name again? Bentz, B-E-N-T-S. Bentz, I'm okay, sorry. With Houston Engineering. So we're working on the phase one design, completed the phase one design that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's in front of you. Uh, my understanding of the of the motion is to do the evaluation. I would anticipate that that would be development of, uh, of a plan sheet to show what it could or may look like to identify what changes to our current design would have to be incorporated and along with a cost estimate for the, the implementation, how much more would it add to the cost of phase one. Uh, definitely we haven't put a lot of thought into what that cost of that evaluation would be, but if I, if I were to guess, I would say somewhere in that probably five to $10,000 range. Most of the data exists currently. We would have to just look at how we would uh, how we would adjust some of the features. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Bentz, Alderman Wolski? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Bentz, uh, it, it seems to me looking back over some of the iterations of Phase One, there was actually a, a maintenance path uh, designed in one of the early concepts. So it's not like this is a completely out of the new concept for you guys. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Alderman Walski, that, that is correct. We did have a maintenance access going under the, the Broadway bridge originally uh, in one of the early concepts. The piece that would be new would be the, the connection to the north going under 4th Avenue. And, and, I, and I think Mr. Johnson's likely right. That, that will be the challenging sure. piece. Uh, bringing the path under Broadway to the west side of Broadway I think is easy. That's certainly doable. Maybe even crossing the path up to the north into the Broadway site I think is doable. The challenge will be uh, on how we, have the, we currently have the Ramstead loop structure close to the bridge, how we get under there. So, you know, as we were kind of chatting during your discussion, you know, a, a, a maybe getting halfway to where you want to be mm -hmm. seems doable on the surface. So get under Broadway, maybe still have to be at grade on 4th Avenue. So mm -hmm. and I, I would expect we would, we would evaluate that during the, during the analysis. Cool. Any other questions to Mr. Bentz? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, further discussion? If I read this correctly, the, the motion is to evaluate the cost and viability of continuing the wet side shared use path from the Broadway Park entrance under the Broadway Bridge and provide access to 4th Avenue. This, does that mean we have to go underneath or can we just provide access to go across at grade? Am I missing something here or do I, I'm not understanding it? Mr. Uh, Jonathan? Mr. Mayor, uh, I just want to point out one thing. It, you know, it says to provide, provide access to 4th Avenue and points beyond. I'm not going to read Alderman Wolski's mind. I'll, I'll let him talk <laughs> on it. But if you're bringing it up and bringing it up to 4th Avenue, 
you really aren't addressing Alderman Wolski's safety concerns because you would have an unsignalized place for those pedestrians to cross north across 4th Avenue when they already have a signalized uh, intersection that they could cross at a block to the east. So, I, I, like I said, just my perspective, I, I don't know that you would be benefiting the safety. You know, you'd certainly be adding some amenities by having a pathway along the, the river to draw people to. But um, if you brought it up to grade um, at 4th Avenue <coughs> instead of going underneath the bridge, then you would have the, the issue of, uh, I guess, a less safe crossing area than a signalized intersection. Further discussion? Any questions for Mr. Jonason? Alderman Padre Clarification, Mr. Jonason. He and I talked about this um, a little bit before, and I wasn't clear of, you know, exactly the details. And um, I agreed with him that going under 4th Street would be, I, I just couldn't see it. And I just want to be very clear about that. I didn't want to seem inconsistent or hypocritical, because when he and I talked, both of us were very skeptical. Um, and I wasn't quite sure which crossing we were talking about. I, I agree going under 4th would be, would be problematic. As a walker and a biker, I have no problems walking over to 6th Street or on the west side or whatever. I'm not, I, don't, I don't see it's feasible to put a crossing there. And I think, you know, safety-wise, you could go east or west. I, I don't think you should be able to have to necessarily cross the bridge at that point. Or, um, so I just want to be sure I, I didn't in any way seem inconsistent or, you know, say one thing to you privately and then say another thing publicly. Further discussion? Further discussion? Call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? No. Padragula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, item number six <coughs> is the uh, phase one wet side shared use path eastward continuation. Um, I'm going to read the motion that's uh, on the agenda so. Everyone will understand instead of, uh, I assume it's going to be Mr. Wolski who moves it. Um, the motion is to request the Sewer Server Joint Board authorize a design addendum to phase one of the Mouse River Enhanced Flood Protection <coughs> Plan for the purposes of continuing the west side shared use path eastward to the termination point of phase one construction. Alderman Wolski. So moved. Thank you. Second. Seconded by straight. Discussion, Mr. Wolski. Yeah, this, uh, this particular piece of the equation feels like a, uh, a kind of a, a, a bit of common sense to me. Uh, we've, we've talked about planning for the paths on the far east section of this area, uh, the phase five area. We already have a plan that is essentially designed right to the Ann Street Bridge. We're connecting these two areas. Uh, and so uh, once again, in terms of the timing and the point in the process where this is the most efficient, I believe uh, while the wall is being built on phase one, uh, if we choose to consider this, uh, it should be done at the same time as the rest of the work. So. Uh, a simple matter of efficiency and, and, and good planning is the reason this was brought forward to tie everything together. Was there a discussion? Alderman Janser? Uh, just, I guess, a question of um, clarity, perhaps, for, for me. So, um, okay, authorize a design addendum. So, what, what are we asking for there? We're asking for, are we asking for the Service River Board? to add, a, add the design work and pay for it? Or are we asking them to uh, authorize the design work and we're going to pay for it? Or what? Do we know? Alderman Wolski? Um, I, uh, I would phone my uh, friend here at this particular point, Mr. Ackerman, because the, the language here was crafted uh, very much at the direction of, of Dan and Ryan with the SRJB. So yeah, I think he can speak to that. Thank Just you. Mr. Ackerman, you're everybody's friend up here. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, thank you, um, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Mayor, good qualifier. Alderman, Alderman Walski, um, I guess to, just to, and excuse me, Alderman Janser, to address the question of uh, 
which body would bear the cost of the design changes. That would be done by the SRJB uh, as a part of our design process. So we wouldn't, I don't think, propose that you know the city find a funding source to authorize design changes. The, the reason why the wording is uh, includes the word addendum is because in early August, in fact, I believe you guys may get the memos uh, later this week, uh, we're going to be asking you to approve the design, the plans and specs for phases one, two, and three so we can start the bidding process. Those particular documents are not going to include these changes. Okay, so, so we want, you know, we, we don't want to have this meeting here and then have you guys make decisions about where you want us to go and then be surprised when the documents that we give you in a week don't include your changes. I'll just, just tell you right now, it's going to take longer than a week to incorporate these changes, but we don't want to delay the bidding schedule. So the way that we do this without delaying the schedule is we will issue an addendum during the bidding process that outlines these changes. And those changes would be consistent with whatever this body directs us to do, basically. Mr. Ackerman, the, um, I appreciate those comments. I wanted to clarify, this is not, is this a new path? Mr. Mayor, yes, this would be a new path from uh, on the wet side from basically Main Street over to 3rd Street. So this would, uh, we would have to find funding to do this? Mr. Mayor, I believe that this would likely fall in the non-flood control category, so. Uh, that was my understanding. I wanted to make sure we all understood that. Um, and what we're authorizing now is to uh, have that path designed um, but uh, and have the SRJB pay for that, correct? Yes, Mr. Mayor, that would be the that would right. be the case. And then, but understanding that the Sears River, or I'm sorry, the um, State Water Commission won't be participating in that. We'll have to find an additional funding source to implement that plan. Mr. Mayor, I think that's a strong possibility. Yes. Okay. Um, but the request here is. Um, is it doesn't cost the city any additional funds? That's correct. Okay. Uh, any questions? Mr. Mayor, can I clarify, please? Yes, you can. The city of Minot uh, graciously pays for 35% of the design of these phases, so. So 35% of the the path, uh, okay. Thank In you. Including the design, sir. So I, I, right. there are city funds that go into that, so. Right, thank you. Thank you. Alderman Padragula. I had a question. Um, are you familiar with the uh, Grand Forks project? And because the reason I'm asking this is that uh, last time we were in Grand Forks, we spent a lot of time by the river, and actually spent a lot of time on the path. I suspect the people in the Blue Moose and the other establishments would want us to go into their establishments. But the river was beautiful enough, and I noticed downtown they have lots of walls and they have lots and lots of paths which are used tremendously. Like I said, they were an attraction for us. And I guess I'm wondering, do you know how Grand Forks paid for those paths? Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Alderman Padragula, um, my understanding is that Grand Forks paid for many of those paths as betterments. So those were 100% local dollars that went, to, went into certain paths. Flood protection is going to pay for, for other paths. For instance, where we can double paths uh, to accommodate levy inspection, we can justify those as a part of the flood control project. So for instance, paths on top of levees. There's a flood control purpose to those. Uh, however, you know, when we start to kind of stray from that and we get into this gray area, that's where uh, it's likely that these paths will be viewed and, and determined to be betterments that we're going to have to figure out a way to pay for locally using non-flood control dollars. I'll also correct me if I'm wrong, but the funding structure for all of the flood-related projects in Grand Forks was significantly different than what Minot is experiencing, yes, sir, particularly on the federal level. Any other questions for Mr. Ackerman? Are you waving to me or? Uh, no. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm okay, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Well, that's debatable, but we'll continue on regardless. That is debatable. <laughs> um, further discussion? Anybody else in the audience? Um, further discussion? Call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? No. Padragula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Motion carries. Item number seven is the Ann Street Bridge opening. Uh, again, I'll read the, the motion if no one objects. Uh, 
The motion is to request the Service River Joint Board to authorize a design addendum to Phase 1 of the Mouse River Enhanced Flood Protection Plan for the purposes of adding an 8-foot pedestrian opening in the flood wall that provides direct access to the Ann Street Bridge. To accommodate operation and maintenance concerns, the Broadway access flanking openings would be reduced from 16 feet to 8 feet each. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Wolski. Second. Seconded by Strait. Discussion? Alderman Wolski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, obviously, this issue has been in front of all of you before. This is the first time for me. Uh, I was sitting over on uh, out in the, the audience for this discussion last December. But uh, I'm bringing this back forward in front of us for consider consideration at this point for, for a number of reasons. Um, first and foremost, I think the citizens of Northeast Minot have been very vocal in support of this particular opening and having this direct access to downtown. Uh, they, they came out to the original uh, public input meeting in November of 2015 and expressed support for an opening at this location. They were here last December uh, when the issue was discussed and considered by the council. Uh, I think we were all a little maybe even shocked when at the conclusion of this agenda item they got up and walked out. Uh, and, and so that to me was a, a, a very strong signal that, that I think we need to do a better job of paying attention to and incorporating the wishes of the citizens into these designs as they move forward. Um, I, I do uh, appreciate the maintenance and operation concerns uh, that Mr. Jonason has. I think on a much larger picture, that is something we need to really begin discussing in terms of how are we going to take care of and, and, and plan for the deferred maintenance and the continual operation of these projects. Uh, but in terms of uh, what we're looking at with this opening, uh, I, I have no doubt it is going to probably add some dollars to, to what this project costs and, and we have to be, uh, if we support it today, I will be prepared to find those dollars should we need you know where we where we have to find them but in terms of the actual operation of this closure uh, I think by reducing the flanking openings at Broadway we're actually creating some efficiencies uh, because I, as, as you see in the, the document attached um, the upright pieces of the removable structure are actually going to be reduced by two uh, and those are the to my understanding the the heavier uh, more difficult to manage aspects of the, the putting the temporary openings in place and and so this particular opening at Ann Street uh, and I did following last December's discussion I did reach out to uh, the uh, the sales representative for these particular systems uh, to get a sense of how much time this particular opening would take and what it would be required and his estimate was that a that an eight foot opening uh, at the Ann Street Bridge would take uh, maybe approximately 30 minutes to install and, and would not require uh, equipment in the sense to put in those upright openings. And so, um, and, and then finally, in closing, um, a concern that was just brought to me about a week ago by a father in town who, you know, he asked me what some of my important issues were at the beginning and, and outside of, of joining the city council and I said the Ann Street Bridge was one and he said, oh, thank you. Um, I have concerns about that because uh, I have a daughter who likes to, to wander around town and, and she walks and she rides bike and, and I would be very concerned about having her use the Ann Street Bridge in its current design because what we are essentially doing is funneling pedestrians in its current design into an area where there is no way out. If you get to the, the north side of that bridge uh, you really only have one direction to go under the current design in terms of, of getting out. And I, uh, I think that creates an uncomfortable atmosphere. Uh, it certainly did for this particular father who, who raised that concern to me directly. Um, and, and so I think in terms of public safety and, and, and being comfortable with where you're at and, and having uh, 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 just the overall uh, sense of personal security, uh, as we get to that portion of the flood protection project on the wet side, uh, it'd be nice for people to have some options. If for some reason they felt uncomfortable going towards Broadway, there would be another direction for them. There would be an out for them. So uh, those are my reasonings. Thank you, for Mr. Mayor. 
Thank you, Mr. Wolski. Uh, Mr. Jonas, and I have some questions perhaps you can answer for me. Um, first of all, can, I've never been on the N Street Bridge. Um, can you describe for me its current condition? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, it, it structurally the the main structures of it uh, are in pretty good shape, but when you get up to it's it's a wood deck bridge, then those wood boards are fastened to uh, let's say a substructure that's fastened to the bridge. Uh, they're not in that good a shape. When we go up there to replace the boards now, as because we do the maintenance on it, we're struggling to have find metal to fasten those into anymore. So it, it is going to need some um, major rehabilitation uh, in the future. Uh, whether that's one year or three years down the road, I, I can't tell you. Like I said, we've been, we've been struggling uh, since the flood uh, with being able to maintain it properly and keep it, keep it safe. So there, there are some, some concerns with keeping it uh, viable and open. So are you, uh, so the city of Minot is the owner of the Ann Street Bridge or is it the railroad? Mr. Mayor, the city of Minot is the owner. Um, years ago we had an agreement where the railroad gave us the bridge and a monetary amount of money, I believe, to more or less take it over, take it off their hands. Um, I would like to point out in that agreement, uh, I believe it says, in, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't recall the exact words, that if that bridge goes under, has to go under major work or <coughs> be reconstructed or tore down, this easement goes away. So we would have to try and negotiate a new easement across the railroad tracks um, for a replacement bridge at that time. Uh, I'd just like to note it's getting more and more difficult to negotiate anything with BNSF as we're finding out now in some of the phase five design where we're trying to put a closure structure across there. Okay, thank you. I would like to add that uh, Alderman Wolski raised two issues during his comments. Um, one was the the access to or the 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 Ann Street Bridge itself, which is not part of the motion. The motion on the floor is uh, basically access to the bridge, and I just want to clarify for discussion purposes that the motion on the floor is specific to access to it. So, um, Alderman Padagula, two points. I want to provide some information about costs and also play devil's advocate. Okay. <laughs> Are we excusing Mr. Uh, Mr. Jonathan or other people have? Uh, you may sit down. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, I was concerned about the costs about these structures, these temporary closures, and I contacted uh, Houston Engineering, and the information they gave me was based on uh, the water treatment plant walls. And they gave me, again, all this is rough depending on things like that, but roughly a cost of $3,000 a foot for a standard flood wall. Uh, to use uh, metal closures, removable closures, for that height would be about 5,700, so not quite double. And if we're talking about eight linear feet, that would be 24,000 versus 40,000 plus, 42 or whatever it is. So there is a cost differential, uh, but that is some accurate data, and I think that was sent to, to Dan, too, that, that email. And I really appreciated Houston's information. They weren't able to provide me, I asked for it, but they weren't able to provide me figures regarding a flood wall versus a dike or levee. Um, but at least that tells us a wall versus a removable structure. So that's the first thing. In terms of playing devil's advocate, um, I'm not sure how many other members of the council were at the 16th Street exercise to close the, the, the temporary structures there. Uh, I spent about an hour and a half there, actually. Uh, I think it was what, Tuesday. And it was a very eye-opening experience for me. Um, I'm still favorably inclined toward this motion, but I, I want to echo what Alderman Walski said earlier. We are talking about significant logistical and staff issues if we do this. And that's something I really wasn't aware of the full extent until I, I actually went there. And to be honest with you, if I won't get in trouble with the city manager and with even on turn me into OSHA, I actually hefted one of these things and put it into place. Uh, I did have a bright green thing. I didn't have a hard app, but I, I did that at the invitation of the lead worker. Uh, and I was very, very careful. And 
what what concerns me is that it's a lot of work. That uh, that exercise was conducted under ideal conditions, and I'm speaking here as a psychologist who knows a little bit about you know human environment interactions. It was ideal temperature. There were 30 people mobilized all at once. We had like half a dozen engineers standing by to give advice. Um, you know, all the equipment we wanted was available. The city manager was there to provide ultimate backup and supervision and guidance. Um, that's not how it's going to happen if, if it has to be done for real. It's going to be at night. It's going to be cold. It's going to be raining and sleeting. These people are going to be worried about their families and their own homes. Uh, they're going to have all sorts of other flood-related things to deal with on top of whatever normal public works duties they have. Um, it's going to be cold. The wrenches are going to be slipping. These things were all metallic, and they're going to, they're going to get very icy very quick. Uh, they're going to freeze to your skin. Uh, it, like I say, the, con the actual realistic conditions under which these things will have to be placed will probably be very, very different from the exercise. The exercise went well. It was interesting to see the kind of the learning curve. Even during the course of putting the first of these things up, they were getting the knack of it. They were figuring out different strategies, our workers, to, to put these things in. It was really neat to watch. But the reality is when we need these, those are, are not going to be un un installed under p essentially perfect conditions. And we're going to have to be willing as a council or a succeeding council to provide Mr. Johnson the resources in terms of staff, logistics, staging areas, and also timely warning of when this thing is coming. You know, we're talking again about ideal conditions. I think it's what, two hours per opening or something like that. We will most likely not have anywhere near ideal conditions. So that's just the caution, that's just the devil's advocate, that if we put these things in, there are going to be costs and there are going to be risks. I'm not concerned about the structural risk of these things failing, although one of the engineering people did tell me in Grand Forks they did have some leakage and they had to put plastic and some sandbags around one of them. Um, they have um, rubber gaskets between them that will have to be replaced, they'll have to be monitored for their integrity. It's neoprene rubber, but if it's out in the sun, it decays. So, so there are these kinds of issues, and again, I'm speaking here as someone who knows a little bit about human factors and human performance under stress. Um, that's something I'm concerned about. I'm quite concerned and much more concerned than I was before I went there and participated. Thank you, Alderman Patricula. You know, the, um, I guess it's, it's impossible to predict the, the uh, time and place of, uh, of uh, another unfortunate event, but if the past teaches us anything is that we had two days and I think the geography of uh, Minot and the Surf River Basin uh, does perhaps give us a little bit more warning than other areas of the country and uh, so we I, I think we would have time uh, I can't predict that I, I, I can't look into a crystal ball and say this is how it's going to work out but um, in 2011, we built a lot of structure in a hurry, and this would be obviously significantly easier than than what we did in 2011. Um, my concern is the condition of the Ann Street Bridge. Uh, I haven't had a lot of contact with, with from people um, that are supporting it, and I've had minimal contact from people that are very concerned about the condition of the bridge. Um, but I do like the idea of having access to uh, downtown from uh, the north side of the river. But uh, the condition of that bridge does concern me. Um, so, any further comment? Are you with? Is, yep. Okay. Short of <laughs> reaching over to you, sir. Well, you can I do that. I just feel like I raised my hand. Alderman uh, Straight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess um, this might turn into questions for Dan as well, but to just speak a little bit to the Ann Street Bridge. As a student at the University of North Dakota, I lived through the 97 flood. And there, to Alderman Padragula's point, there's an old railroad bridge that runs over the Red River from downtown Grand Forks to East Grand Forks. They tore it down. And now the residents are trying to bring it back. And I think we can all appreciate the fact that it's going to be probably really hard to do that. I appreciate that Dan has an incredible amount of work to do with this whole entire infrastructure plan. And one thing that we, I think, need to also talk about in terms of the bigger vision, this network of trails, to Alderman Padragula's point, Grand Forks created what is known as the Greenway Committee. It manages and oversees the whole entire trail system. It's a partnership with also with East Grand Forks because the trails go across the river. I think it's something we can easily duplicate. I've met with the director of the Greenway Committee. They actually operate out of the Public Works Office in Grand Forks. Stan's familiar with it. He used to work there. So I think 
we also need to, to also to Dan's workload, some of us are incredibly passionate, I think, as you realize. We want to work with the parks. I'd like to see this get off of Dan's <coughs> uh, workload. I think that as there's a Greenway Committee, there are user groups, they work with the Parks Department. I think we can incorporate some of these groups. Uh, I know our, our good friend Rory Schill at, Schill, or at Schwinn has expressed a, a great interest to get more involved. Um, I would love to have a conversation with Mr. Merritt at some point of how we can rehab this structure and then maybe find a way to transfer it off of Dan's workload to possibly the Park District <coughs> as a larger concept to the grand vision that we're trying to not just maintain a unique structure to the history of the City of Minot, but to also restore it and renew it to its rightful place because it does play a prominent point. So I just wanted to speak to that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Further comments? Mr. Mayor. Alderman <coughs> Olson. I hadn't walked on the Ann Street Bridge until last night. Um, I've seen it many times. It was never very appealing, but I thought in preparation for this meeting I wanted to walk across it. I actually walked half of the way because I was too nervous to cross it. Um, I, I don't think that the integrity of that bridge is great, and, and I'm not an engineer, but um, there were boards that were cracked. There were boards that were broken. Um, you could easily just with scuffing of your foot rub away some of the wood. Um, I didn't feel comfortable being up there. As we look forward to 50 years, 75 years, 100 years, however long it is that these structures are going to be in place, I don't think that the Ann Street Bridge is going to be part of that, that talk, that discussion. Um, so we're opening something up for a very short purpose. And uh, I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And, and I think when this discussion had been held before, there was a concern about there not being um, any control at the opening so that as people were coming out, they were crossing traffic without any type of signal. So I guess I'd like clarification on that too because I think that that is another safety concern that we need to consider. So if there's someone that can answer that question. Alderman Wolski. Uh, I'd be happy to share some thoughts and, and certainly Dan, if you have anything to add, please step forward. But I, I think, you know, uh, safety concerns in terms of getting across the street and, and that is, you know, because I ride bike and I go over this particular bridge on a, on a very regular basis. Um, and and I'm, I'm always very aware as I come to the north end in terms of watching for traffic and making sure that I'm, I'm not going too fast and, and I don't ride wildly out into the street into the side of a car or right in front of somebody. Uh, the, the wall is going to be kind of a natural barrier to that if we actually position it in front of the bridge and offset an opening a little bit to one way. So we don't have people literally, you know, charging out into what will be the street on that side. I think the other piece of that too is uh, uh, that little offset and that's, I, so I kind of intentionally designed that into the, the PDF as a way of, uh, of showing that uh, we can get people out to the other side of that wall and there is a sidewalk already designed on that side of the wall. And, uh, and, and then from there, uh, I guess we have to hope that they're able to get themselves across the street. Um, and, and Fourth Avenue is, uh, I, I don't think it's gonna be quite so busy that we won't be able to have, to, to meet those challenges with other uh, uh, pot potential pedestrian beacons and, and, and crosswalk signs the way we do in a lot of other locations in town. So I, I did, I, I think I attempted to address that concern, Alderman Olson, in terms of kind of that little offset concept to, to basically slow down and make people be a little more considerate of, of the fact that they were going to be entering a, 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 a significantly busy street right there. So I, if Dan, anybody else has anything to speak to there. I would Mr. Jonason. Mr. Mayor, um, I, I guess there are a couple things I'd like to address if I could. I'll, I'll start with uh, this for Alderman Walski. Um, uh, I think offset of the opening probably would help, but you still have to keep in mind that you're crossing a one of Minot's major thoroughfares, Fourth Avenue. If you look at the openings now that have been approved today, we'll we'll have the one over at the Broadway, the entrance feature. That provides you a crossing of Fourth Avenue again at a signalized intersection, a safe crossing. You're going to have the new Broadway Bridge 
that's going to give you access across from the Ann Street Bridge to the east now we're going to have an opening just on the east side of the 3rd Street Bridge which is going to give you access to this area you have the 3rd Street Bridge that's going to give you access across the river so adding this in you're going to have five access areas in five block area I said when I look at it you know I, I rely on the design engineers they're the professionals on putting this all together they can design an opening that's safe as Alderman Wolski said you know I, I, I tend to try look at maintenance issues that we're going to have long term Alderman Pondragula touched on some of those um, you remember the 2009, 2011, 2013 flood fight issues, like I said, it was never 75 degrees and sunny when we are out there putting this stuff into place. It, it, I agree, it only takes half an hour probably to put this structure in that we're talking about to set those stop logs in, but you have to have equipment there to get those stop logs up, safe equipment, a lift of some sort, because it's going to be over 14 feet tall to get those stop logs in. So you don't just do that off of a step ladder. You need to mobilize that lift there. You need to get these stop logs hauled over there from <coughs> wherever they're stored. You need to make sure that the base where you're putting it down, which is probably going to have snow and ice and dirt and everything else from the winter there, cleaned off in preparation so that you have a good seal down there. So your half an hour task of closing up this area just became a two and a half hour task to put that closure structure in. Multiply that times 20 to 22 is what it's projected to have along here. 23. We just added one over on the east side of 3rd Street. You know, when we get into the future phases over in Roosevelt Park, I just ask that you keep in mind every time you add these structures you add something else that has to be put in place. I, I agree 100 percent with the mayor. This is going to be a lot easier to put in than the emergency f flood fight measures we went through in 2011. That's 25 years down the road before this is all done. In the meantime, if we have an event, we have to have the manpower to put it in. And in 2011, I can tell you, every bit of staff that I had whether it was water, sewer, street, storm sewer, any departments, they were going a hundred different directions. So to pull staff to make sure that you're getting all these closures in when storm sewers are backing up, sanitary sewers are backing up, uh, you need to organize contractors to get emergency levees built, it's, it's going to be a daunting task. We'll do it to our best. But So I think said, I just keep that in mind uh, as you go through and consider additional openings. Mr. Jonason, you said that there's four openings in a five block span roughly. Mr. Mayor, four access points. Access not points. not openings per right. se in the flood wall, four access points. You're going to have the new Broadway bridge that will take you over um, right. the uh, the river. Right. You're going to have the I guess the Broadway entrance feature in the flood wall. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the Third Street Bridge that takes you over the river. And then item number one was the additional opening and access in the phase five design that all ties into this trail area over here. So you have four access areas um, for getting pedestrians north and south across the river. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Jonason? Thank you, sir. I guess to summarize my position on this, um, the um, I like the idea of access, but I'm not sure this is the right one. And my reasoning is that we're building an access point to a bridge that we don't feel is safe. And the, the maintenance of that bridge is um, we don't know if we're even going to be able to maintain it because of the deteriorating condition of the uh, structure of the where the the boards are attached so 
I'm not sure that that's the best solution. And then when we've got these other avenues to go across the bridge, um, I'm not as confident about this as I were I was with some of the earlier ones. Alderman uh, Wolski, I'm sure you have a rebuttal. I, uh, I I wouldn't say a rebuttal, but I perhaps it would fit under that definition. I that's guess right. sure. But uh, um, as I, I I think the question of a bridge, the bridge, and the future of the bridge is a separate issue, and uh, and it is certainly something that that I think we will need and should take up at some point. Uh, uh, as soon as it's most prudent to do, we have a lot of important business in front of us, and uh, and, and we'll have to see where this fits. The bridge exists right now. It, it is uh, it is open to the public. Um, I would agree with uh, Miss Olson's uh, concerns, and she's not the only person who has uh, expressed to me that she feels uncomfortable up there. Um, I, I think that's a very valid concern. I. Uh, when I sit in the Starving Rooster and, and look out as people walk out of that particular restaurant and they, they walk up on that bridge and they take pictures and they look out over that, I, I think what we have in this with the bridge is something very unique and, and I, uh, it's, a, it's a contributor to Minot's historic railroad pass, it's a contributor to our sense of place and the type of community we are. And, and so I, it, at some point in the future, I, I would expect I will be very supportive of of taking a hard look and doing what we can to to preserve that structure, the opening that we're discussing here, uh, I, I think, has uh, secondary and and value regardless of the future of the bridge. Um, we've got a very long uh, stretch again, once again, between Third uh, Street and Broadway. If we have nowhere for people to go, or once again, it, and let's just a. Uh, uh, imagine a future where the bridge is gone. Now we have a, a five block stretch between Broadway and Third Street where we've once again given people a, a, a no out concept. They've got a wall on one side and a river on the other and if they get down that five, five halfway down that five block stretch and become uncomfortable in some way shape or form their options are to go back uh, and so uh, and then you know as just sort of in final closing as I look at Grand Forks and what they've done, in particular East Grand Forks, uh, the, the language or the concept of the invisible flood wall, as I know it, was, was very much born there. Um, East Grand Forks, I think, and, and Ryan or Dan, or if you guys can correct me, I think it's an 800-foot removable structure flood wall uh, that they manage under uh, the exact same climate that we live in, difficult, challenging environments in the spring, uh, and, and so I, I'm you know, they're able to do that in East Grand Forks. Uh, I think we can get this done here in Minot in terms of uh, having an opening that, that really uh, meets the, the requests of the citizens. Uh, I think we've accommodated for, for some of the maintenance concerns by reducing that, that flank, those flanking openings at Broadway, which do represent a real reduction in the, uh, the effort and resources that will be required to put that particular opening in place. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to remain supportive of this motion. I hope all of you will, too. Further discussion? Further discussion? Anyone in the audience? Call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Barney? No. Janser? Yes. Olson? No. Padragula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, item number eight is a consideration of a resolution of support for the Magic City Waterway concept. Uh, this resolution has been developed as a solution to the city's me to the city's meanders of the Ro Mouse River. It will not bind the city to future action or spending. It will only serve as guidance for staff and Sears River Joint Board officials as they shepherd the. Mouse River Enhanced Flood Protection Plan project through the feasibility study process to ensure that the United States Army Corps of Engineers is aware that the City of Minot supports attempts to mitigate damages uh, caused by the existing federal flood protection project. So moved. Surprise, surprise. Second. Seconded by, I'm sorry, I didn't hear who made it. It was Potagola. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Alderman Strait, but. Uh, I'm willing to take the fall. Um, discussion? Alderman Wolski. Thank you, Mayor Barney. Uh, uh, I, 
so everybody knows, uh, the language of this resolution was, was crafted largely by me with, uh, with input from Tom and Kelly, and, and I'm not sure who else they may have forwarded this along to, but, but the, the hope here is, and the intent, and, and I think we've got everybody comfortable with the fact that this isn't going to bind us to, to future actions, but it is going to set the, this Magic City Waterway concept as a goal for the city of Minot. And uh, if you aren't familiar with that Magic City Waterway concept, which I, I expect you very well may not be, I did put a kind of a brochure in front of you today that was developed uh, to explain the concept. But uh, the larger vision is to get water flowing through these dead loops again. And, and I call them dead loops right now because that is what we refer to, that, refer to them as locally. Uh, that's what everybody in town knows these areas as. Uh, but w what I have learned about uh, over the last year and a half or two is uh, through, through Alderman Straits and my participation in Friends of the Suresh River is that, that this plan uh, does exist as a solution to those dead loops. The reason I'm bringing this forward at this particular point, uh, and I'll invite uh, Mr. Ackerman up to explain the genesis of this document when I'm done here, but the, the critical need to support this today is because we are at a a stage in the feasibility study process with the Corps of Engineers as they are evaluating the larger flood protection concept. We're at this critical stage where if I think if we show support for this concept as a body, as an institution, we have a better chance of securing a federal partner at some point in the future because they will take into account the city's support for fixing these dead loops. And, and I, you know, in a, in a short period here, I'm going to stop referring to them as dead loops because I think I've even discovered that they don't like, that the core doesn't like when we refer to them as dead loops. Um, maybe that's because they're, they, they wish they had done a little better back in the 1970s. They wish they would put a, a flood protection plan in place that didn't create these. And, and they actually have funding and, and a, a vehicle available to fix some of these pa past mistakes. And this resolution is, is basically in, intended so we can send them a message saying we really support you guys doing everything within your power to, to fix these and we're going to keep our options on the table as well, uh, including uh, uh, everything there. But with that, uh, this document, this Magic City Waterway concept uh, did, was created at one point based on a, a request from our former city manager and I, I think Mr. Ackerman can speak much more clearly to that point. So Ryan, if you wouldn't mind. Excuse me, I'll call the people up. I apologize, Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Yeah. Because I have a, I want to speak to Mr. Jonason first. Sure. I know you're excited. I am. I know. <laughs> Mr. Jonason. Mr. Mayor. Um, could you, uh, Alderman Wolski has characterized uh, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers being supportive of eliminating the, um, the I'm sorry to use the term, I don't know what else to call them, but the dead loops uh, in the community. Um, have, are you, are you, is that right from your perception? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, in all the discussions that we've been having with the Corps of Engineers, um, we have been encouraging them to look at options to get better flow through the, the dead loops or uh, cut off loops mm -hmm. of the system. So that has always been, um, you know, every time we meet with them, uh, when the discussion of ecosystem restoration or moving forward, um, we have always pushed with the core that something needs to be done because their old project had some errors in it that need to be corrected. So, uh, like I said, from a staff point, I have always pushed that uh, going forward to see if, if something can be done to uh, correct the structures as they were built to get flow in there. Because right, right now, um, until we get higher flows in the spring, it's tough to get water circulating through those loops. Uh, the way that they were designed with some of the energy dissipators as we're going through our televising now of all of this stuff that's required under our SWIF, we're finding silt buildups of four, five, six, eight feet in front of some of these structures that we've cleaned out once and it comes back as soon as you get some flow on the river. It, 
it's been magnified since the 2011 flood because there was a lot of silt brought down. So long story, sh or short story long, yes, we, we continue to try uh, get the core involvement or find some additional funding to uh, correct. And they do have some funding available for uh, this program? Mr. Mayor, um, they have said there's a funding, a separate funding available for ecosystem restoration. Okay. The problems that we've seen lately is um, it, it has to meet some sort of benefit um, or justification, uh, cost benefit, and they're not, they're not finding that right now. Okay. Um, any questions for Mr. Jonason? Any uh, Alderman Strait. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Dan, would this would this help you in that effort? Do you think in saying that the city of Minot is is behind us, behind you personally in your professional work with them? To Mr. Mayor, Alderman Strait. I. I don't know hurt. that it would hurt. <laughs> uh, like I said, it's any time we can get uh, clearer direction on what the council's wishes are, we'll take it. Any other questions for Mr. Jonathan? Alderman Janser? Um, <clears throat> Dan, I assume you, you've looked at this resolution that's before us in some detail. I mean, you've read through it at least. Mr. Mayor, Alderman Janser briefly yes okay well I mean I, one, one of the concerns I have in here is that you know I think I think um, sometimes less is more maybe uh, you know there, there seems to be a lot of there seems to be a lot of stuff in here that is you know sort of an, an, an assertion or a conclusion that um, you know that that the core you know, should have done something differently, or could have done something differently, or caused problems um, with the um, channelization project that was that was done after the '69 flood, and you know that um, that um, restoration of some of these uh, dead loop channels, meanders, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, would you know would produce certain results. Um, and, and I guess, you know, one of the concerns I have is that there's, there's just um, too much information um, that's maybe either unsubstantiated or, um, you know, I mean, it's a pretty simple thing to say, um, you know, we, 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 would, we would like the, the old river channel to flow uh, if possible. I mean, is, is, is something like that enough or do we need all of this? Because it, it seems to be like maybe it's just a little too much. Mr. Jonathan? Mr. Mayor, Alderman Janser, um, that's a good question. I may have to rely on the city manager or, or city attorney to help address some of that. I can give you my perspective of it. Um, like I said, uh, anything the staff can get on what the council wishes to pursue on this uh, is great. You know, it, it provides us, I guess, additional clarity, uh, whether it's detailed or not so detailed. Um, in looking at this, the only concern I would have with any of this is by passing this resolution, are you locking the city into a funding commitment for something like this, one? Um, Two, not being familiar with or, or seeing, seeing the uh, Minot or uh, Magic City waterway concept as to what that is in detail. Um, I guess I, without knowing what that is, uh, I would caution supporting it uh, until I, I knew what it was. Follow up, Mr. Janser? Uh, no, I think that's fine. Thank you. Alderman Strait? Mr. Barney, or Mayor Barney, sorry, sir. Um, and Dan, I guess the way I see this, it's a, we've created 
I'm not going to say we, uh, the Corps of Engineers has created a double-edged sword. You're saying that um, they're concerned they don't see the cost-benefit ratio. And um, in all honesty here, as the friends of the Cirrus River, we have put together a very thorough uh, written, formal, uh, comment within the Corps' uh, own plan. And part of that is what Dan is speaking to, that they don't see a cost-benefit. They can't see a cost-benefit because they have taken away our asset. So we can't have, we don't have the data, for example, for water species that I saw as a kid in the river because it's gone. So we're being penalized both sides of the coin. And by the city of Minot supporting this today, we are also directing Dan to say, yes, that I understand the federal government needs to see a cost-benefit ratio. However, how can you find the information when it's already been taken away from us? So we're being penalized twice. And that's why, if you don't quite understand, they need to see the dollars work out. I, I understand that. But what they did after the 69 flood uh, and how they try to fix it today, they can't because they've, they've already, as Alderman Sitma said earlier, they created a rock line ditch and they cut off the river from our dead loops. And they're dead. The species I saw as a kid and played in are gone. Now we have bullheads. We don't have a, a lot of the other species we have. So it's hard for us to get the data to the core and convey that uh, when it it's, doesn't exist. And so we're being penalized again. Just my call. Further discussion? Further discussion? Alderman Padraig, are we done with Mr. Jonathan, or? I hope so. Sit down. Thank you. Yeah, on a general point, um, I see this as a really important statement of values. I'm a scientist, I like data, but I think ultimately our values and beliefs and visions have to guide us. And I see the revitalization of the river as being a very important part of making this community better. And I think it's part of an, I don't think, I know it's part of a national trend to live in greater harmony with nature, whether it's something simply as basic as repairing damage that the core caused. You know, 50 years have gone by. We looked at these things differently back then. I don't blame the Corps. They did what they had to do. But I think our concept of how we live with nature has changed dramatically. Um, I would cite the fact that all over the country, uh, dams are being torn up. I talked with an engineer. I'll give you his name later. Maybe you can get some business, Mr. Ackerman, whose company does projects reversing core actions throughout the whole country. They were working on a billion-dollar project in Michigan to get rid of a dam. And this is happening nationwide. And I think this would, be fit, would fit very well into that movement of getting back to living in harmony with nature. The river was a source of transportation, of commerce, of drinking water for the native peoples who preceded us. And even when the white settlers came, it played a very important role in the community. And I think now we've come to see it more as an enemy. It's not an enemy. It's someone we have to coexist with, something we have to coexist with. And if we can revitalize it literally and figuratively, I think that's an important thing to do. That's where I think the future is. So I would support this. It, to me, it's, it's an expression of our values, of what's important to us, and it does provide guidance to staff and to where we want the city to be. Um, so I'm going to support this very strongly. Further discussion? Alderman Wolski. Uh, one final thought to, to kind of compliment uh, Alderman Padragula, because I think he did capture the, the general sentiment behind this resolution very well. Um, I think we all want to see better for the river. That's something we could probably all agree on uh, immediately, and we don't even need to take a vote on that. Uh, in order to get to better, we have to, we have to set a goal that we want to get there, and then we have to tar start taking the steps. And, and this resolution is really designed to be that very first step. This is us declaring this concept, this larger uh, idea that the river can be an asset in this community as, as something we want to achieve. And, uh, and by setting the goal, then we can, we can begin taking the steps to get there and identifying what is possible, what isn't possible, what can we afford, what can't we afford. You know, all those things are, are, 
are discussions for the future, and they're going to be hard ones and difficult ones. But this is the declaration that we want. We want more from the river. We think it can be an asset, and we're, we're going to stand up here today, and, and, and I hope say that. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience, further discussion? Call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Motion passes. Item number nine is an adjournment. Moved by Janser. Second. Seconded by Straight. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries.